Hi there, welcome to Exam AZ 900, Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is episode 52, Industry Compliance Terms. My name is Tim Warner. Today's skill in the AZ 900 objective domain starts with Describe Security, Privacy, Compliance, and Trust, passes through the objective Describe Privacy, Compliance, and Data Protection Standards in Azure, and finishes with Describe Industry Compliance Terms, such as GDPR, ISO, and NIST. First, what is the situation with compliance certifications? And specifically, how does this relate to Azure and Azure Fundamental certification? Well, first of all, know that these compliance certifications can either be voluntary or involuntary certification programs. A voluntary program might be where you as a business want to demonstrate to your customers and to your stakeholders that you care about, for example, customer data, proprietary data, privacy in general. By contrast, you may be subject to involuntary compliance based on, for example, your region where you are in the world and or your industry, specifically the healthcare industry here in the United States is subject to the HIPAA regulations, among others. Government here in the U.S., if you want to be a government contractor, you need to bring these certifications to the table before the government will even talk to you. Finance, you're dealing with bank account numbers, credit card numbers, sales figures, all very proprietary and confidential information. Education, you could go on from there. Many industries are subject to involuntary or mandatory compliance certifications. The AZ-900 objectives call out three specific programs. The first is GDPR, and I think Microsoft wants you to understand this because it really is global, even though it pertains to just a single part of the world. GDPR stands for the General Data Protection Act, and it affects any company that does business in the European Union and or, I guess I should say, who handles EU citizen data. Because the world is flat, as they say, and many businesses have customers all around the world, GDPR GDPR regulation is going to affect and does affect businesses that are far outside the European Union as well as those that are sourced in the EU specifically. GDPR chiefly is concerned with regulating data protection and personal privacy. Another set of standards come from ISO, the International Organization for Standardization. There's the 27,000 family, typically a voluntary certification that's concerned with information security management. Another one is the 31,000 family, and this concerns implementation and risk management for a business. Lastly, we have NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology in the U.S. NIST is particularly important for those of us who want to earn contracts with the U.S. federal government. This is typically a voluntary framework unless, like I said, you want to do business with the government, in which case it's going to be required. And remember, all of this factors into the Microsoft Cloud Platform and Microsoft Azure in particular because you're doing business in Azure, we presume, so therefore you may need to make sure that your Azure implementation and the way you're storing data in Azure is consistent and compliant with whatever programs you're involved in. NIST 800-171 is concerned with managing controlled unclassified information, or CUI. The NIST Cybersecurity Framework, or CSF, is managing risk in an InfoSec context. Now, our brief demo. Let's say as a business, you are planning to deploy some of your line of business applications into Azure and you are subject to GDPR compliance requirements. If you've been following the study guide sequentially, you've already seen the Microsoft Privacy Statement, you've been to the Microsoft Trust Center, and you're aware of the Service Trust Portal and the Compliance Manager tool. How do you, at the end of the proverbial day, get detailed guidance from Microsoft, though, on how you can implement a particular compliance program? Well, I find that doing a good targeted Google search may be your best option. If you do a search for Azure GDPR guidance, for example, this Azure blog article is the first one that came up for me. It's a couple years old, but it contains some good guidance on how you can use Microsoft Azure to protect privacy and uphold GDPR. Specifically, this blog post down towards the end has some hyperlinked bullet points here. And I've actually right-clicked these links and popped them into another page. So let's take a look. There's a really long article called Azure Data Subject Requests for the GDPR and CCPA. This is in the Microsoft Docs, as you can see. And if we go over to the table of contents here, it breaks down 
into the various steps with detailed guidance on how you can use Microsoft Azure to get a hold of the controls you need to qualify for GDPR compliance. There's another link to the Service Trust Portal that's in that blog article called Get Started support for GDPR accountability. And again, if you scroll through here, they have a whole bunch of assessment forms and tutorials that help you or give you a leg up on maintaining GDPR compliance in your Azure implementation. Back to the Azure blog. By the way, you can find the Azure blog at azure.microsoft.com forward slash blog. This again is a couple years old, but it's certainly evergreen for the most part. New capabilities to enable robust GDPR compliance. There's a webcast. There's there's a bunch of links in there. And lastly, I found this article at the Microsoft Trust Center called Safeguard Individual Privacy with Cloud Services from Microsoft. And if you scroll through here, we've got compliance best practices, documentation, lots of resources. Ultimately, all of this compliance stuff is either something that you're going to be personally responsible for or not. But if you are an Azure subject matter expert, you're going to help your compliance officers big time by sharing these resources with them and saving them from having having to go through all of these different sites. Because I personally, even though I've been an Azure subject matter expert for a number of years now, I find it a little annoying that there's all these different places to go when you have a single question and a single solution you're after. You gotta be a good researcher to be good in Azure, I think. For learning resources, number one, Azure and GDPR guidance. You can find that at timw.info forward slash CMR1. I found some docs on Microsoft 365 and the NIST CSF. That's timw.info forward slash CMR2. Microsoft 365 and ISO 27001. Go to timw.info forward slash CMR3. Another lesson down. Well, I can really see the light at the end of the tunnel of this series. I hope you've been with me throughout the whole thing. It's been a joy to teach you. In the next episode, we'll turn our attention to Azure subscription offer type. So yes, we're going to move away from all of this security, trust, and compliance and get back on perhaps more familiar ground with Azure specifically. In the meantime, as you may know, my Twitter handle is TechTrainerTim. You can look at my Pluralsight courses at timw.info.ps and my website is techtrainertim.com. Thanks again. I'll see you around.